All right, it's day two. So we're taking over. Brian went to go eat a sandwich or something. Jasper, I like to lick this end just to make sure it's working. <laughs> I would have never guessed to create a seagull waterfall. You guys ready? Let's go set some boulders. Come on. Yesterday, I was a little like, oh my gosh, we have a lot of work to do, <laughs> right? In a, in a day and technically a half. We were really gonna have to muscle through this and get it done. I'm super, super happy at where we're at at lunchtime yeah. on the first day. So we have, you know, one waterfall is done. We basically have another big waterfall to build, probably similar in height to this guy. Some retaining walls and some cleanup. Like there's a good chance we get all this done today. Tomorrow we can just sit around and look at it. Plumbing's done, the trench is in, the pipe's done. It's good that that's finished. Doing these edges back in here is gonna be cake. We probably have an hour of like cleanup and relocating some of these boulders out of here and stuff like that. We have probably a little attention over in here. Just getting that all cleaned up. Got some rocks we gotta carve in over in here. Yeah, I'm loving the progress. I think we're doing really, really well. Is that it? Okay. Brian's not here. So we're taking over. Brian went to uh, go eat a sandwich or something. So we're setting the rock right here. But we're building upon this waterfall, so there's no biological filters. It's gonna be like a little creek area. So we're trying to get some elevation fast so we can create this plateau, give us plenty of real estate as Brian would say. So it's amazing how we've gotten all this done and now we're up here on this last pool. And I don't know why, but you always think of bringing the water all the way to the headwater of the stream. But for us, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is just to look like an upper pool. This pipe is getting really tight in through here. So instead of trying to snake this pipe all the way from here back over to here, I think what we'll do is bring this two inch pipe into the spillway. The top of this is probably two inches lower than the water level. The water level in this pool is probably like someplace in here. Yeah. Right? So as long as I put the top side up, I can put a big boulder right on top of this thing. As long as my liner comes up high back here, then I can backfill oh, to it. The spillway is kind of like a fancy way of bringing a bulkhead fitting in through the, the liner. Instead of the water just shooting out through a pipe, this diffuses it. Huh? Yeah? Why make it super complicated when we don't have to? What I never want to do is have this pipe just shoot out because it looks like uh, your thumb like over a garden hose and it'll look ridiculous. The other thing we could do is put an elbow on here, drop it down into like an aqua block, let the water fill up in the aqua block and then it'll just kind of diffuse out. As water fills up in through these, it'll give this way more of this spring fed look rather than water like shooting across. That's weird. Giving this pond more of this spring fed look from up in here, which is I think what I'd rather do. And I love that you guys agree with me. Thanks so much for the support. Let's dig those down so the tops of these are um, probably three inches lower than that. So we can put gravel over the top of them. Thank you. 
right guys, well I think that's a wrap today. I'm super happy with the progress. It looks fantastic. Um, the waterfalls in here look good. It's always a good sign when you have a garden hose with that type of pressure and the water is actually coming up and over the rocks, not underneath. So that means we sealed that up pretty good in here. All we have left to do tomorrow is a little bit of plumbing at the top, probably set like six, seven miscellaneous rocks up there and then we'll fire this up. So I think we're in good shape to be finished by noon tomorrow. Why don't we go um, celebrate of sorts? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>
All right, that's a wrap. That's how you build a pondless waterfall in two days with about 20 tons of stone. Obviously, I could have done it myself. But every time I do one of these builds, I hope to take something back. And so I learned some different edge techniques and things guys are doing with lighting, different things that guys are doing with pumps. What I want to do right now is take the time to thank Bernie. Bernie with Skyline Ponds puts all this stuff together. He's a super, super talented guy. You saw all of his work before. If you guys are ever in the Twin Peaks area, make sure you give Bernie a call or stop by or at least stop Pine Rose Cabins. I mean, this place is so, so cool. So let's take a look at this thing a little bit closer and I'll kind of point out my favorite parts of the entire project. So we'll start down here at the bottom. I love the way this waterfall turned out. The huge giant frame rock, the hole in this boulder right here with the light coming up through it is so cool. Wish I could be back here at night. This waterfall just turned out amazing. I love the way it kind of twists over here. Instead of this rock coming into this area, we get this little bit of extra action over in here. From this vantage point, look at how much movement this stream has. One thing we talk about is you don't have to face all the waterfalls directly at the main viewing area. Waterfalls are visible from about 150, 160 degrees. Our main waterfall that faces the road is still very visible from over here. We just catch the profile of it. Let's move up there and take a closer look. So as we come up into this area, another thing we really concentrated on with the guys is some different edge technique. A lot of times you can get carried away with boulder, 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 boulder. Doing little things like this with just this gravel type beach area where the liner's up high over here and the gravel just kind of swoops in to create this really bird loving area down in here where the water's moving a little slower. Birds are not going to bathe in this area. The current's just too fast. This area is going to be great. We take a look at this pool, then it drops in. We always make sure when we're doing our excavation, we pretend we're the water and with our shovels, we erode away the earth no different than a waterfall would. So you can see here how this drops down and creates that waterfall. And then kind of a surprise, and this is why I still love doing this, I would have never guessed to create a seagull waterfall. Look at it. Look at the little foam area right here. So cool, and that's all because this rock has this high point here. So that water comes back and moves back on itself. Then of course, the big signature waterfall, the one that's visible from the road. It comes off on the right side, it comes off on the left side. It's got some neat action over there, all fed by our spring-fed pool up above. If it looks this good now, imagine what it's gonna look like as it gets landscaped, lights go on, maybe some of those snows that they get up in here. It's gonna look so cool. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tell me what your favorite part was, and we'll keep doing this every single time. Hey, don't forget to tell your friends. Team Aquascape.